Hey, it's D. It's a brand new episode coming right for you, right on the FTO Network. Enjoy. All right, everybody. Uh, we had some technical problems, so there was a whole a whole slew of information that everybody missed. I'm your host, D, of FTO Network Talk. Uh, I have a super awesome guest who has to explain his entire lineage of his of his programming all over again. Anton of uh, Cheesy Controller, welcome to the podcast, man. Hey, everybody. Uh, yeah, for those of you who don't know, I'm Anton Fix. I'm the host of the Cheesy Controller podcast. We're a weekly gaming podcast based in Atlanta. You can catch us live every Wednesday. And then within the next week, we have an episode live. We've been going weekly for over four years. But as a podcast, we started over five years ago. Uh, we've never missed a week. Sometimes we do bonus content. Uh, we do streams every wednesday of the episodes but then we do other streams of other games we'll do sometimes live streams directly from ps5 if there are multiplayer games we're playing there or we'll play more party friendly games like smash bros and things like that on the switch and monster hunter there's a lot of monster Hunter. (laughs) your your go-to i know when i first saw you on um on Discord, like that was the game you were playing with Monster. Like every time I see you, usually on Discord, you're playing some Monster Hunter. So like that is definitely seems like seems like one of your go to games, right? Yeah, Th- I have yeah. thousands of hours into Monster Hunter at this point. So <laughs> right, <laughs> that's cool. And, you know, I know, like I was on, I was on their show for those of you who don't like. Uh, there's a podcast going out. I'm gonna have to repost that podcast on all my pages so you guys can get to listen to it. Uh, I know it's, it's on Twitch right now, but uh, I think like it's gonna be dropped on your podcast pretty soon, right? Yeah, it'll definitely be out before Wednesday. Uh, it's with our editor right now. So gotcha. So uh, make sure you guys check out that podcast. I'll, I'll send like the twink the Twitch link pretty soon on my Twitter, and I'll try to put it uh, take a screenshot and put it inside my Instagram story. If you guys like really want to get a part of it and like listen to the entire show, it was a good show by the way. But uh, it's I, I see like the the Monster Hunter game. You talk about there's an expansion coming out for Monster Hunter soon too right yes so monster yeah. hunter rise the latest monster hunter game it's kind of like 5.5 for anybody who follows how monster hunter works uh it's the newest game from the portable team it's one seamless open world map as opposed to like the segmented sections and so rise came out in about march of last year and Oh, wait, you mean com- like there, there's no screen? There's no there's no load times for anything inside this game? Is that what you're telling me? Well, I mean, the load times is when you first load into a mission. And then okay. before in Monster Hunter, when you travel from one area to the other area of the map, there'd be a load screen. Hmm. But now it's just one open map. You can go literally Wicked. anywhere. When a monster Wicked. runs away, you can f- watch it fly to the area. <laughs> That's cool. I can see why you get so addicted to it. Like, uh, so you were a big Skyrim guy too beforehand. I'm guessing, right? Oh no! I actually, my experience with Skyrim, uh, this was Skyrim came out when I was in high school, and one of my friends said I should really try it out. So I went to Redbox and rented Skyrim, and I only had a PS3 at the time, and the PS3 version of Skyrim around launch was notoriously bad for like corrupting saves it, breaking systems like skyrim PS- means about it yeah yeah so it almost bricked my ps3 and so <laughs> i returned skyrim to the red box and never look back it sounds right, like yeah i mean i've given it a couple <laughs> shots since then like i have the ps5 version well like, you gotta get a collection of games back there is skyrim on a shelf behind you um maybe let's see <laughs> yeah i actually have uh skyrim on xbox 360 back there see, he didn't only look back once he looked back twice like to make sure that he had it back there so there you go like uh sometimes the games mess you up and you forgive them that happens sometimes <laughs> with some games <laughs> well yeah and i mean like i got the ps4 skyrim like the edition that came with all the dlc and everything and that had a free upgrade to the ps5 version so i've dabbled in it a little bit since then um but 
now it's dated. Like playing it now on a PS5 with all the other like AAA next gen games that I have access to, it just doesn't hold. It doesn't up. compare. Yeah, no, I get it. It's something like me and certain movies and TV shows. Like, like if it's too far gone, like I can't even, I can't even get invested. Like, I just, it's hard, man. It's just hard. Yeah. But uh, let's let's start with some news. Uh, Legendary Comics teams up with Oscar Isaac to to head a new comic called Wounded Sparrow. And uh, I had the synopsis of this story. It's uh, it seems like it's it's about a guy who who family or someone dies in his family. Like he had to go out and take down that person, but he's kind of like a casual kind of dude. It's uh, it's it's more like just like a, a comic to say a TV show. But uh, after him coming off this Moon Knight story, and he's also part of the Soul Wars world, too. Yeah, Poe right? Dameron. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, it's a supernatural noir graphic novel, and I do not see a synopsis inside this article, and I'm very disappointed I do not have a synopsis inside of here. But, uh, like, I know that a lot of creators, I think Wesley Snipes has, like, an indie comic book coming out also and for a lot of people who are inside like the comic book world they say like you know a comic book is nothing more but a storyboard for a movie or a tv show do you think that's what he is like trying to do like is set up his own franchise with like with a comic book with his face attached to it and like to get like a show and more branding out that way well i mean i oscar isaac is just kind of like a really likable person in hollywood right now so I could see him promoting his comic and actually like that gaining traction on his own. And then of course people are dead. Like if he's going to be attached to it as an actor in a TV adaptation, of course, everybody's going to like that. He was one of the selling points to watch Moon Knight for me because. If it was anyone else would have done it, like I probably would have just blown it off. But like, since it was Isaac attached to it. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm right there with you. So, and I mean, yeah, uh, I know I'm a lot more familiar with the anime and manga side of like adapting graphic novels into television, which and, happens a lot in that world. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'd say it happens. Any manga that gets big enough bec- gets an anime adaptation, but there's also a lot of anime only originals that sometimes will get a manga adaptation after the fact so doesn't like work out that well you see though that's a, like the transition the transition from like anime to manga doesn't work as well from manga to anime i would say or would you disagree with that uh it depends it really because certain things like i'd say uh fully coolie fully coolie was originally anime only and fully coolie did a lot of really interesting things as an anime but then also i enjoy fully coolie in the manga adaptation so yeah i think it recently it recently ended as a manga didn't it didn't like it recently like stop printing well fully coolie goes in and out of print all the time so i have the uh original run of two volumes from tokyo pop manga okay. when it was under that publishing i have those and then i also have the fully coolie omnibus that was uh released under dark horse so damn i didn't know how they get they branched themselves out like that i felt like they'd be you know what like because tokyo pop is more of like a it, it's not just a japanese distributor it's also like a big american distributor of anime and manga too aren't they well yeah it, and so yeah. that was the north american the because Tokyo Pop, I think, is still around, but they're nowhere near as big as Viz or Kondansha <laughs> or there are a lot. Square Enix Books is even really big as far as I'm just looking over at my manga shelf and just seeing I can see you looking over there. Yeah, <laughs> like the publishers that are printing like Yen Press is still kicking around. And so. Okay, see, see now we got now we got to pause for a second and talk about you when it comes like to, to literary work. I didn't know that you were big into manga. Like you just surprised me with this. Oh yeah, I've been so actually Naruto got me into reading manga wow. in middle school, like pre Shippuden Naruto. Uh, Fridays when I got out of school, my mom would take me to the bookstore and I could get 
a volume of manga. I know that, I know that story. Like I felt like me and my origins with super uh, superheroes. So like, no, I hear that completely. <laughs> right. So my mom would take me to the bookstore, and I'd get a volume of Naruto, and I would pick up. Uh, I subscribed to Shonen Jump when it was nice. at a North American thing because uh my godmother's a librarian so i'd go to the library and i'd see sean and jump and then eventually i was like i gotta get a subscription because i'm reading it every month and when it when i read it at the library the Yu-Gi-Oh card that comes with it somebody's already gotten it out of there and so yeah i get a I've, subscription gotta get these Yu-Gi-Oh cards these exclusives Right. And then, I mean, even now, uh, so I would read, I eventually found online, like, websites that would let me read the chapters weekly as they came out in Japan. And now, Shonen Jump has transitioned to a, a completely online and app-based platform. And I still read My Hero Academia every week. I read Jujutsu nice. Kaisen every week. I read... That's still going? Manga-wise? Yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, the one that just ended that was pretty big was Doctor Stone. Like Doctor Stone just ended, and that was part of my well, weekly rotation. That was a big for about uh, about two or three years ago. Yeah, I remember that. Like everyone was talking about Doctor Stone. A well, the ago. anime. I think they're about to have a new season of the anime. The anime just took a long time to get started with that one. I hear the same thing with Jujutsu. Well, Jujutsu Kaisen is about to happen too. Like they're going to take a while for new episodes of that to come out as well. So, well, I think we're getting another season of Jujutsu Kaisen this year. Uh, but the thing with You're Jujutsu optimistic. Kaisen is it made so much money off of having the movie of volume zero. Mm -hmm. So like Jujutsu Kaisen zero, the movie was a really big step as far as like marketing that to the like broader mass market and like increasing the popularity of Jujutsu Kaisen. So, I mean, it was already extremely popular. Just uh, and that, that did pretty well in like the American in America also, like uh, the movie because that usually usually like more of a predominantly uh, Japanese thing trait, like to have anime films do well in theater. But it did pretty well in American theaters too, from my understanding. Well, we're kind of in a new modern age of <laughs> anime movies. Like I remember in middle school going to see the first Naruto movie in theaters. Really? And, yeah, but that was like a limited fathom event. Like it showed twice over the course of two days, and it was really, okay. it wasn't like a wide theatrical release. Like it was a I was special about to say, event. Because all I could think of was Pokemon. They even had that kind of clout. Like yeah, Pokemon, and I remember Pokemon seeing movies. Pokemon in theater and Digimon. Digimon had a wide theatrical uh, was, release, and the Digimon yeah. movie, a great <laughs> anime film. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Is <laughs> like that yeah. you being nice or being sincere? No, I'm like legitimately. Dig the Digimon movie is one of my favorite anime wow. movies of all time. But then they, the creator then went and remade it to. The creator just can't seem to make a story other than the story of the Digimon it's, movie. So it seems. Yeah. Yeah. So Summer Wars was the movie that's literally shot for shot, just like Digimon without the Digimon license. <laughs> And then there's a Louis Vuitton commercial that is shot for shot the Digimon movie, but with the Louis Vuitton license. So it's you now got to find that. Like that's something I got to look into for sure now. Oh yeah, uh, I'll actually go find it. <laughs> uh, and you're right about Jujutsu Kaisen. It is coming out uh, 2023. Comes out next year. Oh okay. So yeah, uh, I know between the first season did really well and helped with the manga sales because that's kind of how uh, Viz decides what yeah. gets anime, what keeps going, like the balance with that. And it's really at the end of the day all off the manga sales. Like I'm really into Spy Family right now, and Dude, that's I, very popular right now. Yeah, yeah. Watching the anime of that. Uh, as soon as the anime this season is done, I'm catching up with the manga, and I'm going to read that week to week. So you must have a full subscription to Crunchyroll. That's what you're telling me. Uh, no, actually. So I watch most of my anime on Hulu, and then the yeah. Shonen Jump app is two dollars a month. And so the what? Shonen Jump app, it, yeah, and. For the amount of years that I've been reading manga weekly and everything, I'm like two dollars a month for Gee, that's a steal, dude. Right, yeah. <laughs> all of Dragon Ball, all of Naruto, all of Bleach, all of Jujutsu Kaisen, all of My Hero Academia, all of Spy Family, like Wow. And just 
and it's not the anime it's the manga so and, i'm fine with that though that's not bad and then every sunday at 12 noon eastern the chapters drop and like we have a channel in our discord and we'll talk wow. about it like i'm not caught up in one piece yet but i know the one piece fans have been all over it because <laughs> apparently are, it's been they are all a different gas. breed it's been all good really? since uh, chapter a thousand because they hit chapter a thousand and they're like a thousand and forty something and I know week to week it, there are crazy things happening. Like even Wicked. as somebody who is yet to get into One Piece fully, I can tell like oh yeah, it's really cool right now. My my dude, I think you got to be either uh, in your fifties to be a part of hardcore One Piece, or you got to be a teenager to be hardcore into One Piece. Like uh, I think, like I don't think like there's any like in between of uh, One Piece fans. I don't think anyone in their in their mid to late twenties getting hardcore into One Piece. But that's me talking. Like uh, I. I don't have the time to watch over a thousand episodes or read over a thousand mangas. Like it's just, I can't do it. I can't, I can't well, be that guy. For me, like, cause, uh, Dr. Stone, that was actually something like when I started reading Dr. Stone, I started at the beginning and got caught up, uh, before it ended. And there have been days where I've read over a hundred chapters of manga in a day, you know, <laughs> no shame. I like it. None whatsoever. And like, I feel you. Like, uh, I mean, I have like the manga expertise under my belt, but there has been times I've just blown through tens or 20 like issues of a comic, just like going through them left and right, taking screenshots, posting them on the web. Like, oh, just yeah. going back that, and forth. So I, I hear yeah. you. That, I hear um, you completely. Jujutsu Kaisen, that was so when the se- first season of the anime ended, that's when I started reading the manga. Now I read it week to week. But getting caught up there were the people that read it before the anime was a thing and then i started catching up to where they were and there would be like these full spreads i'm like yep screenshot that send that to the group <laughs> oh this one has to go in my wallpaper folder you know there, there you get it there it is i got yara floor uh the new wonder girl like i still got her as my as my lock screen on my on my tablet so no i get it i get it completely so yeah, it, it happens, man. Like it's the nerdiness. It's the nerdiness. Um, there's some more news I got out here. This is like Miss Marvel news. Uh Frahan Akhtar joins the Marvel family in Miss Marvel. I don't think we know who he is exactly yet in the show, but he's apparently like very big in the Bollywood. Like uh he's a very big Bollywood actor. Like, and that's like one of the reasons why I'm talking about this because I feel like I don't talk about enough Bali news on my show. And I also don't talk about uh, Miss Marvel as much as I possibly should. But uh, this is, this is like apparently going to be legendary. Like, they get like a, a lot of representation a part of the show. And like, I know I'm not like on like the best terms with Disney right now, but um, with Moon Knight being completely finished, all six episodes are out, and Miss Marvel's coming out soon, then Armor Wars, and they got Iron Heart coming out next. Like, I may have to re up on my Disney Plus and like keep a close eye on Disney and what they're doing in Florida. But uh, this is some great news. Like, to get like a this this type of representation inside the MCU, and I got. I, I know DC is on their way, and I hate making the comparison to DC tomorrow all the time, but like I know DC is on their way with getting the representation out there. But like this is impressive to see the representation, not only just like in say Shang Chi or say uh, Captain America in the Winter Soldier or Falcon in the Winter Soldier, but like now they're going to like the realm of Ms. Marvel and getting like a uh, Pakistani Americans and like you know those of of the Bollywood nature, like uh, getting them a part of this this. This mythos is pretty wow. We talked yeah. about representation on your show too, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like one of the things Kamala was like a big step in the comics as far as representation, as far as like mm-hmm. having a new superhero that, and I mean, Miles kind of did the same thing as far as yeah. like in the Spider Man and a lot I, of. I literally connect those two a lot, like it being like, you know, very similar to each other. Yeah. Right. And I mean, that just kind of expands the representation shown in the media that people are consuming. And I mean, that's always like, mm-hmm. I personally, like, as somebody who, like, both of my parents are from Trinidad, I'm Indian, Portuguese, and black. So I extremely mixed. Oh, yeah. And for me, like, there's always room for, like, I didn't see myself represented in media for years and years. And I know that, like, 
there are people that are out there that have absolutely zero representation and zero like things that they can look into to like see themselves reflected back in and i know that's something that's big in gaming like yeah. there's been a lot more games that are taking the time to have character creators where you can actually make a representation of yourself in games and i know that that is something like if you are the hero of your own story in that sense and your character actually looks like you you feel satisfied like a greater connection yeah yeah and i do like the fact that like a lot more gamers and like if you go like a step further go into anime and talk about how like, well, there's a lot of Japanese creators out there who are demanding to have representation on these shows. Like uh, Fire Force, the oh, creator yeah. of Fire Force, like he demands to have black characters on his show because like he feels like you cannot keep these kind of shows going without having proper representation. Well, out I mean, there. Like, in... he's been great about that since Soul Eater because like yeah. actually like I was a huge fan of Soul Eater growing up and like having black characters in Soul Eater was a big deal, and then like just f having him come back in a more modern sense with fire force and having that representation in that show i know it connected with a lot of people and like i'm actually super excited that it's getting a third season because yeah. like for a while like a I lot of us are like huge fans done. yeah i thought it was done too i thought like like it's fire force has to be over after this season like they're not gonna bring this back but like it like yeah, you, they're it's, bringing it's it back nice. It's nice to see it coming back, man. I hope they get like a killer theme song for this new season too. Oh yeah, they... the, the theme song. My Inferno, God, right? <laughs> good God. Mayday. Oh yeah. That's... Jeez. They're killing it with these theme songs, man. But Mayday I mean, killed me. Yeah, Mrs. Uh, Green Apples, awesome. Soul Eater had great openings too. Like you yeah. can't Black Paper Moon. Oh man. <laughs> It's in my queue. I got I got a, a playlist of my anime, and it's in there. So most definitely, I can't can't negate them. <laughs> uh, what was the news that you had? I know you got a few articles. Give me uh, give me one of them. Uh, well, as far as the Monster Hunter sticking with one of my favorite series. Uh, oh, that was one of them. We already talked about that. All right. Well, I wanted to talk about some of the improvements that are coming to Sunbreak because they've announced. Uh, a returning monster, Seregios, which was a fan favorite monster from, I think the last appearance of Seregios was Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. So it'll, it's nice to see this monster getting a new model, new, upgraded fight. Uh, it's going to be super interesting with that. They announced a uh, subspecies of two of the monsters that were introduced in Rise. They announced um, Magma. Olmadron and I can't think of it, but it's a Sonicanth. It's the ice subspecies of Sonicanth. And I know oh, personally, God. both of them had really good looking armor sets in yeah, the base. Yeah, the graphics on here is gorgeous. My goodness. Oh, yeah. I, you're probably looking at footage captured from the PC version, and that's why I'm trying to... Because <laughs> <laughs> the Switch <laughs> version runs at 720p, 30 frames per second, and Something it's... you also mentioned on your podcast. <laughs> yeah. But so, okay. like, you're a big eye candy kind of guy, it sounds like. Well, I just... When I know a game... Because it was fine. Like, I played a couple hundred hours of Rise on the Switch when it first came out. Because there was no other option. Like, I was going to play the new Monster Hunter game wherever I can play. No matter where it was, yeah. And so... I played it on Switch, but now that the PC version is out and there's about to be new content, I'm one of the only people I know in the group of people that I play with that plays on PC. And yeah. I'd rather play on PC because the fidelity is just there, but I'm probably going to have to go back to the Switch version and it's going to be physically painful. Because <laughs> I've been playing it at 4K, 60 frames per second. It's just been great. Uh, and I'm going to go back to 720p, 30 frames, and it's be annoying for a while especially if you like compare depend comparing to how much you play games on a regular as is like the going back and forth like that's going to be kind of kind of annoying but like it's going to be worth it to get the gameplay it'll be worth it to get the gameplay i remember those days it's uh it's annoying and it kind of makes you it takes you out of the game sometimes but it seems like you're a big as we talked about earlier in the show you're a big monster hunter guy so like this is uh this is this is something you want to get into this is the world 
Yeah, uh, <laughs> we actually, so between Cheesy Controller Podcast and w- some of our friends in the Rusty Rupee Podcast, we actually okay. did a, like, sub-podcast for a while, the um, the Squad Sessions podcast. So we actually had a Monster Hunter-focused podcast that <laughs> ran for a limited time. And we, there are still plans to kind of bring it back from the dead, but... There are a few episodes of that out there, and that's how into Monster Hunter we were. That's hilarious. That's wow. Big when I go, I think I'll go and find some gameplay. That's like I think I want to do that before I take off. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do all my chores and then watch some Monster Hunter gameplay for like 10, 15 minutes just uh, just to see what it is that you guys are so hyped out about because the name alone is not selling me on this but the fact that there was like a movie based off this oh the uh, movie no t- uh, so <laughs> no no we don't talk about that <laughs> the thing is the movie if you are into monster hunter it is like there's a part in the movie where T.I.'s holding an assault rifle and he has his okay. eyes like he has his eye up to the scope, but the eye that is up to the scope is closed. <laughs> so like it's from the people who brought the Resident Evil like live action movies, like the Mila Jovovich ones. So just just high octane like action is what you're trying to tell me. Yeah, like it, mm. it's an isekai kind of weirdly like they're in like the uh, Afghanistan desert and they get okay. teleported to the Monster Hunter world. It's a whole thing. Okay. Yeah, it's they guess, kill they off screen Megan Good. It. They kill Ti in the worst way possible. Uh, it's funny, like, for all of us with thousands of hours of Monster Hunter experience, <laughs> we watched it, like, together in a Discord call, and, like, it was... The qu- the uh, quality came from the hilarity factor, but... Gotcha. And I wouldn't say if you have no knowledge of Monster Hunter to go watch. Even the Netflix, they did, like, a Monster Hunter OVA on Netflix. It's, like, CG. Okay. And even that, like... It looks worse than the PS2 cutscenes. Damn, dude. Jeez. From Monster Hunter when it was on PS2. It's just really not. Sounds, that sounds very painful the way you're describing it. Sounds like it hurts. Yeah, hurts the, to games, about it. the games are ridiculously amazing. The adaptations to film and television have been completely terrible across the board. So, well, uh, I appreciate the heads up. I'm really going to note to self to avoid watching a Monster Hunter uh, movie at all costs. That's not on my list of things to do now. So congratulations to everyone out there who uh, wanted me to watch it. Like, it ain't happening. But uh, there is there's a few cancellations of TV shows out there. Uh, I talked about this on my my Twitter page. I know that MODOK has been canceled. Naomi oh. has been canceled. Uh, um... Batwoman has been canceled. There's been a few NBC shows. Uh, My Mayor, Keenan. There's been a lot of re- like cancellations and a lot of like talks about renewals. Also, um, I can't think of any of the renewals right now. Like, I, and like uh, I made a big note about this, and like, I forgot to record on my 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 Twitter uh, Twitter page. So all that list I had is completely gone and like it's gone forever. So sorry about that. But uh, usually they talk about renewals or cancellations like around June, July when shows are getting ready to come back. But uh, it, it having all the cancellations being told to us tells me that TV shows are becoming more and more popular than they ever, ever have been. Like uh, a lot of folks are saying currently we are in a golden age of TV shows. And I just watched a second episode of strange new worlds. Star Star Trek show, and I said this before, and I'll keep on saying it. It has some of the best sci-fi CGI I've ever seen, like in any any show. Not like better than the Expanse, better than any Star Trek Troopers movie. Like uh, it, it has like the best like sci-fi space special effects I have ever seen in any form. Like all the Star Trek shows, Picard, Discovery, all of them. This is the best I've ever seen, and. <clears throat> This is like this is my last story. I know you got one more after this, but uh, like it just is it's interesting to see that movie theaters are closing down, like or, or like not closing down per se, but like uh, not getting as many featurettes as they used to. It's mostly just big budget films, and seeing that TV shows 
are literally fighting with one another, or I guess figuratively fighting with one another, like to to be top dog because Netflix is is being dethroned. Uh, Apple TV has got their first Oscar, and you see Picar- uh, Peacock and Hulu and uh, Paramount Plus and Amazon and all these other channels uh, or streaming sites getting their getting their ovens. Like we got like the boys coming out soon on Amazon. We got uh, yeah, that's one that I've been got... meaning to get into is the boys. It's an interesting show. You got Bel Bel Air, like it's like the number one top show on on uh, Peacock right now. You got uh, you got Coda again, like winning winning an Oscar. You got uh, like like I think like Swan the the Swan song with uh, Mahershala Ali getting like nominated on Apple TV. Like you got like all these different like ABC, CBS, and Fox. All those places are going on the wayside, man. Like and like like the the streaming platforms are taking over, and it's. It's it's more interesting because like even in your world, like it's getting affected. Like you being like the big uh, big anime like fan like you are, like it, HBO Max is partnered with Crunchyroll and Funimation. Like uh, even Hulu is partnered with uh, Crunchyroll and Funimation, and <clears throat> you see tons of anime on those on those platforms. And like even Netflix has like them their own original and oh, some yeah. animes some, that, they, that they buy. Some of from, like, the Netflix animes that we've gotten in the past few years have been some of the best animes that, yeah. that like that you can stream anywhere. Period. Agreed. I got. I made an argument about this a couple of years ago, like that Netflix wasn't going to be a top contender when it comes to anime, but like I completely disagree with that. I think like think they are. Like I think in Castlevania, even though like like I wouldn't say it's a traditional anime, like it it still like it shows like like that their anim- animation is top notch when it comes like you know to putting it out there. Well, I mean, like Carolyn Tuesday and The Great Pretender, and yes, there's Devil Man Cry Baby. There, there's nope. just there's a anime movie bubble that actually just came out that's pretty good. I think Wit Studio animated it, and it's a full feature length anime movie that uh, I think the only way to watch it in North America is through Netflix. Ooh, and Netflix. I know they're yeah. they're putting out the new season of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And so on on Netflix, yeah, like uh, jo- Jolene was like the latest uh, latest JoJo, and like the, I know like like all the other ones are going to be pri- primarily on there. Yeah, I just wish Netflix were better about not throwing their sh- <laughs> their anime into jail. Uh, there, uh, there's a lot to be said about Netflix's practices when it comes like to putting out content, and I I, I don't think that's ever going to change with them. I just I don't see that happening anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was my whole my, my whole rant about like the the TV world and how like they're kind of just TV is top dog. TV is it. Like, uh, most of these companies want you to stay home, watch some television, or be on the go and watch TV. And movies are. <sighs> I want I'm gonna be frank about this and say that a lot of TV, a lot of movies, it's hard. I went to go see the Batman in theaters and someone was smoking on a vape. And like you know, like I'm not really for that life, man. That's not really like I got I got I got rage inside of me. So when I see someone smoking or someone on their cell phone constantly, like that's that's a deal breaker. Like I'm I'm out. Like and I can't be a part of that that life. But the TV shows and having that kind of experience, I'm here for it. Like uh, is 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 that a deterrent for you going to movie theaters and like having like all those those different kind of like things happen while you're sitting in the movie theater? Well, I mean. If- Every time I've been to the theaters in recent history, I always go and I wear a mask and, like, I kind of sit to myself, keep to myself. Like, I think, like, somebody vaping in a movie theater, that's just inconsiderate. Like, somebody, like, but I haven't really dealt with anybody really, like, talking too much or anything like that because... Mm. And I mean, I've gone, I've seen Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I've seen Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. I've seen, even like last year, uh, I saw the Demon Slayer movie in theaters. I think that was the first wow. time I went back to theaters. Did you cry? <sighs> See, I knew it was going to happen because I read the manga, but it didn't make it hurt any less. No, it didn't. <laughs> like, uh, spoiler, spoiler alert, same, same what happened to Rengoku. Was, uh, it was not, it was not. Damn but, it. it was very yeah. Have you watched the Entertainment District arc? Because somehow they topped the movie in pretty much every way in that new season of the show. 
the last four episodes of like that entire season was like mind blowing. Like you, you get to see uh, Tetendro really grow up a little bit in this, and whoo, wow, it it was it was pretty hard hitting, man. It was dark. Yeah, I I was worried at first. I was worried in the first couple episodes of uh, Demon Slayer of this new season. I was worried, but. Uh, it didn't take long for me like, to change my mind about how good that season was. Yeah. It didn't take long at all. Tengen Uzui, one of the best Hashira. And I'm so glad, like, I don't know if it's spoilers that he doesn't die. But... I don't think it's spoilers. Yeah. I don't think it's spoilers. I think, like, everyone, like, even if they don't watch it, they know it by now. Like, what I, what my big takeaway is is the fact that, like, every woman is obsessed with this guy. Like, so obsessed with they, they are cosplaying or dressing up as one of his wives, like, like crazy. And, like, that, that is hilarious to me, and I love it so much. Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of another one of those big breakthroughs of, like, mm-hmm. anime into the mainstream, like... You couldn't be on Twitter around the time that that was going on without seeing the clips. Like, that's what got me into Demon Slayer originally was a clip from, like, I think it was episode 19 okay. of the original season. The season with uh, Hinokami Kagura. Like, that, seeing that clip on Twitter, that was one of the things that initially I was like, all right, I, I'll go check this show out. It's, it's deep. It's a very deep show. It's, uh, it's very Japanese, and like, in, if if I can say that without sounding smug, but like, in 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 what it is, it is it is it is very Japanese. Like, and it, it really makes me think about the the late '90s style of animes, like um like like the Ninja Scroll, like the like the what was that, like the Ghost in the Shell, like the Dragon Ball Z. It really makes me think about those kind of shows, like in like the way it's structured. Yeah, it's like it's a it's a shonen style anime, but like it has like a lot of a lot of hard death to it. Yeah. Okay. What was that? What was less? Go ahead. Uh, just Demon Slayer, like the work they do with the characters and like the cast and like having such a strong main cast and having being able to show growth within that main cast in a consistent way. And like, I don't feel like it has too many issues with pacing. I feel like it's a awesome. like. Even in the manga, there was one issue I had with pacing in the manga. And for people who know what happens with Muzan and uh, the wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man, like there were some pacing issues with that. But outside of that, I think overall the series does a really good job at like keeping itself paced well. I will say, like, they, they also have a very good job of listening to the fans, too. Well, the thing is, the the manga's completely over. Like, okay. so, everything, they're just going to, like, the Swordsmith Village is the next arc that's going to be animated. And they've done a really good job. Like, there are YouTube videos that I watch that are, like, shot by shot, page by page, breakdowns of how they adapt the manga into the anime. And they've stayed very true to the source material. Like certain anime, like Promise Neverland, they completely go off the rails at a certain point. Soul Eater was even guilty of this. Like the Soul Eater manga is vastly superior to the Soul Eater anime. I feel like like the B Stars is a little bit different too, right? Uh, well, I I don't read B Stars. Uh, but so I'm not sure, but I've enjoyed what I've seen of the anime of that. I don't even think I'm fully caught up with that anime. Gotcha. What was that? What was the last story that you had that we can talk about? And we can we can wrap this up. Well, the last story that I had is kind of in the music world, but also in the video Hello. game world. Hello. Uh, the Primals are having a concert live in Japan. Um, in June, and they're going to be streaming out that broadcast on Twitch. So, if you're subscribed to like the Final Fantasy 14 Twitch channel, uh, if you follow Sokin, the composer for Final Fantasy 14, on Twitter, like I know that he's been posting updates as far as that. But for people who do- aren't familiar, uh, Final Fantasy, the Primals, uh, so. Masayoki Soken is the composer for Final Fantasy XIV, and he's created some of the best Final Fantasy music there's been. 
and he does like ba- full band renditions of the songs with his group the primals and so like they have music videos that are on youtube they've released albums of those renditions of those songs and it's always like like they perform at fan fest every year and it's really a cool thing that they do for fans of the music of the games and so like they put like like some of the art in the background too that's crazy well yeah they they're completely tuned in like that's one thing final fantasy 14 whether it's the music whether it's like the localization whether it's the like development of the game they're really in touch with their community and wow. like i know final fantasy 14 had a bad name early on for launching almost broken but uh just over the course of the just the last two expansions, Shadowbringers and Endwalker, like they've made the game a lot more friendly for people to get in, and like people regard Shadowbringers as the be- one of the best Final Fantasy stories. Period. Like full stop. Better than seven. Better than twelve. Better than like. And I mean, I can attest it's an excellent story not even just in the sense of it being a final fantasy game it's just a really well written like all encompassing story i'm looking this up it looks like like they're they're entwined with square enix it's like it's like square enix runs their page runs their their band's page of the primals yeah so yeah, I mean they release all their music under Square Enix because it's all, and I mean the composer he's literally an employee of Square Enix, like he. No way. So. Yeah, it's yeah, they, kinda... their, their first show is uh, June June fourth, in Japan, and their second one's the day after. Is uh the Makuhari Messi Event Hall? Both both for both shows are there. What? Wicked. So that'll have be. Them, have you seen them live? I mean, I've seen them not live in person. I've seen the uh, last year Fan Fest. They did a Fan Fest around the world where they had like four days worth of live streams about the game and like wow. having concerts and stuff like that. So I was actually able to catch uh, the Primal's performance of a couple different songs throughout that last year. So. What's the word on that, man? Like, you gonna go take a tour, take a little trip to Japan, see some, uh, see some shows? I mean, Japan's in the not near enough future, as in June, but like it's in the plans for the near future. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like a couple of years ago, uh, I wanted to t- turn twenty-five in Japan, and it just ended up not working out. So, I might my mission might be turning thirty in Japan. Hello. Uh, I'm not going to ask you when that is, but it sounds like a, a hell of a goal to reach, man. That sounds like fun. Well, I just turned uh, 28 last month, so. It's like, see, you got time to build that up. See, we can hype it up, dude. We can hype it up every episode. Anton, you're getting ready for that trip to Japan. We got you. Come on, dude. <laughs> Catch me out in Tokyo. Yeah, right? There you go, dude. See, you know. <laughs> uh, That's awesome. I gotta see it. Now I got to put that to my list. Of anime songs on my uh, on my Apple Music now because that's who because like the, the Final Fantasy music that I've been hearing as of late has been incredible so and the fact that it's all in house see if I had like the don't know how I'll like uh, I close out with some some Primal's music but uh, I'm not I'm not at that level yet but uh, anything else you want to say before we uh, we head out of here. Uh, no, uh, people can find me on Twitter at Anton six, three X's. They can find the podcast at cheesy controller com. That's the best place. Cause there are links to all of our different social medias there, but, uh, twitch.tv slash cheesy controller and, uh, twitter.com slash cheesy controller without the last E because character limits, <laughs> I noticed that. I was like, wait, is it either supposed to be gone? <laughs> yeah, it was a character limit, and it was either Cheesy Control with, like, an E at the end or Cheesy Controller without the E, so. 
you take your dig where you can get the battles are the battles are sometime one missing one letter so it's fine don't worry about it <laughs> like you yeah. you're still going you're still going super strong whatever i type it in it still pops up and it recognizes it so regardless yeah. it's still, you can google it's still cheesy controller and you'll find this uh this has been fun this really has been like and like uh, i told myself i wasn't gonna do anything like you know interviewee in a while but uh i think this is a good a good pace. I did this once before, like a, a few years ago, where I, I asked someone to bring on two articles. I talk about two articles, and we just like we just chat, and that's what this was. I appreciate this. Thank yeah. you for thank you for doing this with me, man. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was great having you on our content. It was great being able to come onto your content. Like it's really collaboration with cool people is always. Yeah a lot of fun so and i'm always like the atlanta gamer community for a long like growing up in atlanta i always felt like you know not that many people played games but like as i've become an adult and been able to like socialize and network more like i've been able to meet more and more cool people who are out here you know that are from here too which is shocking right (laughs) right (laughs) dude i i hear you i am i am as as you are going to be turning 30 i am going to be going to my 40s and like uh we got like a bit of a decade of a apart from each other being in the atl and growing up there there were limited people reading comic books limited people watching anime limited people playing video games so it felt like like a town of tumbleweeds getting yourself into this world in atlanta and like in the heart of atlanta and like seeing folks like you uh per- people like urban sama uh, folks like Melanie and Velma, all Atlanta based, and like like having them like you know talking about not only just like nerd stuff, but like propping up like cosplayers, propping up like other black content creators like in the area. It just it feels good. It feels good like to see that. It feels good to be a part of that world. It feels good like to put yourself into like that scope and like you know, as we talked about earlier, like to be represented. And like even if it's us who has to do the representation, it feels good to put that out there, man. Yeah. And it's, like, such an amazing, welcoming community. And, like, you know, uh, it gets bigger and bigger by the day. More and more people are coming to Atlanta who, like, are black content creators who are from other places. Like, and I feel like every day the scene gets a little bit bigger. And there's always room for more and more people to enter in and to work and to. That's the beauty of it right there, dude. Yeah. That that is the video. Like you don't feel like you're getting pushed out of the way by anybody. Like you can like you got room to do what it is that you want to do, not what everyone else is doing. Then copying that. Like it feels it feels good to do that. It feels good like like to be able to breathe, like to stretch your arms. Like yes, like right. I can just talk about I can just talk about news and not have to worry about anything else. And it goes with anything else. I don't have to be like like hardcore to the anime scene. I don't have to like to worry about like what what new thing is happening with comics. I can just do whatever I feel like doing. And like it's. It's satisfying. I know I said that twice in this show, but like it, it is, it is satisfying sometimes because growing up, you did not have that sat- uh, that satisfaction, like inside this world, like with the any of these communities, they were they were pretty much like you know one tone, essentially. So yeah. All right. Yeah, I know. And, and hey, uh, get, if you're getting to know me, you realize like I go on weird little tangents of talking about sometimes nothing or you know just put my feelings out there so i appreciate you humoring me when i do that and uh and well oh, no. knows me knows it, i do the same thing <laughs> it's all in the name of great content like I, that's <laughs> at the end of the day you know these are discussions that wouldn't have gotten out there in other circumstances so you know you got to get it out there i appreciate that i need i needed to hear that because sometimes i forget that so thank you uh anton this has been fun uh until next time uh make sure you guys keep an ear up because i got an ig coming up soon talking about grand crew got renewed for a second season you're gonna hear my thoughts about it only on ig well until it gets posted into a podcast but only on ig for now until next time you guys take it easy all right bye (laughs) hey guys d here of ftl nerd talk i hope you enjoyed the podcast make sure you like subscribe follow tell your friends about ft nerd talk got a lot of different shows for all of you make sure you tune in every week for a brand new episode take it easy